I'm new to this. <laughs> okay, so I believe the first thing I'm supposed to do is uh, call this uh, session of the Whispers Business Meeting to order. Yay. Yay. Um, so, uh, I am Jesse Lip. I'm going to be the presiding officer for this business meeting. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. Um, the correct form of address for me is going to be Nick's chairperson. I've helpfully included this on a sign up at the front. Uh, I want to introduce my staff really quickly. So at the he head table, we have Alex Axe as timekeeper, uses they, them pronouns. Uh, Kevin Stanley is my deputy presiding officer, uh, uses he, him. Uh, Linda Denneroff is our secretary, and Linda uses she, her pronouns. Don Eastlake is our parliamentarian and controlling the slide deck, even though he's over there and the slides are over there. Uh, as Don uses he, him pronouns. Uh, absent from us is uh, Jared Dashoff, uh, the business meeting logistics liaison, uh, who also uses he, him. This is a very lovely photo of him with his mother at his wedding, so you can all remember that. <laughs> Sergeant of Arms Staff, uh, Terry Neal, uh, Jovan, and Anne, uh, who all use she, hers, and then our videographer in the back, Lisa Hayes, who also uses uh, she, her pronouns. Um, as you can probably tell, uh, and you've all seen on your badges, the room for the pronoun stickers, so we are going to try and encourage use of that. So when people come up to speak, as well as giving your name for the secretary, I'm going to ask that you let the business meeting know what your preferred pronouns are. Um, let's see, a couple other quick announcements before we get going. Uh, there is Wi-Fi available. Uh, the network is WISFIS or WISFIS 5G. The password is ASUS underscore WSFS, all lowercase. Um, I'm sorry? Uh, there's also a sign on the back, but I'll read it once more. It is WSFS underscore. Nope, I'm. Nope, ignore me. It is ASUS underscore WSFS, all lowercase. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to have the captioning services here that we have in years past, so we do have. Uh, seating at the front row reserved for people uh, with accessibility needs and who uh, need to be close to the speakers. Um, because of that, I'm going to ask to, that people make sure when you're speaking to keep your lips visible for people who need to be able to see that. Um, there is coffee and tea in the back. Uh, and lastly, uh, when we uh, take our bathroom breaks, I'm going to ask to inform you that the faucets in the bathrooms are controlled by a little sensor off on the other side of the faucet that you wave your hand over to turn it on, and then you wave your hand again to turn it off. Uh, so that is how they work. <laughs> Welcome to the 21st century. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm going to ask Terry to come up and uh, run through some information uh, from the Sergeant at Arms. My name is Terry. Oh. Ready? Ready? There we go. Okay, there we go. Uh, this does not have an extension. My name is Terry Neal. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the head Sergeant at Arms. Um, I will repeat the announcements I've been making throughout the morning. If you are not able to rise and come to the podium to speak, please seat yourself near the central aisle. Uh, if you are able to rise and come to the podium to speak, please do not seat yourself right on the central aisle. Um, if you're having trouble hearing, then come to the front. We have lots of chairs here. Um, if you, in order to be recognized by the chair, you stand. If you are going to have trouble standing, we have yellow cards for you to wave instead. If you do not have a yellow card and you want one, put your hand up and I will come and give you one. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm now going to ask Dawn to run us through uh, our starting slides and uh, give us some parliamentary information. Okay. Uh, I think that uh, in 
general, if you have parliamentary questions and things like that, you can, you can always ask the, the, uh, the head table. Uh, we'll, and we'll answer. Usually there's a little handout with some guidelines over them. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Back. Back. Okay, everybody knows that. Um, so there's a few things here. One is that this meeting is going to be recorded, and we can vote to not record some session if people want to do that, but it's normally recorded, and normally it's don't call any time. We've actually done that, but we probably have some time. Uh, there may be brief timeouts for technical questions uh, video recording and things like that. Um, this is going to be, uh, will we be posting these things to YouTube? Is that, is that? The recordings will be uploaded to the YouTube channel Worldcon Events. That's Worldcon Events. At the earliest opportunity, bandwidth permitting, and perhaps some of you know what bandwidth's like in the convention center. So. <laughs> uh, so you should note your presence on the attendance sheet. Okay, I have another in mind, for example. Uh, yeah, um, the ribbons for attendees are back also. Okay, everything is in the back. Uh, please silence your noise making devices. Uh, you should be careful when you speak to do so that we can hear you. You can usually tell if the things are going through the sound system in the room. Uh, speak you know, into the mic, uh, holding the mic at a funny angle, even if it's near your foot, near your mouth. Uh, or there are announcements about uh, if you have difficulty standing or other handicap, we'll do the best to accommodate you. Uh, there's a slide here on appeals of the ruling of the chair. We tend to have things like that a little bit more in the Swiss business meetings, perhaps, and other ones where you're, you're used to uh, what other meetings you may be used to, in which case this year is, is an appeal. Okay, I guess all this information is in back. So I, I, I apologize. I arrived a little bit late, so I lose yeah, control of that. Okay, um, so I won't actually go with that. So this is the overview for the I will, chair. Doesn't mind. I'll go ahead with this. Uh, the idea of what we're doing today is uh, setting the debate times for the items that will be considered at the main business meeting, uh, accepting reports from committees, uh, including the market protection committee. Any standing rule changes or resolutions, um, and uh, that's the primary thing. So, uh, at the last Worldcon, there were presentations by the uh, uh, subsequent bids, which occurred at a, a program item, the ones that were not required to be uh, at the business meeting. Do you know if that's going to happen here? Or, yeah, okay. Um, so, this, however, I doubt that this uh, reference to the room here is correct. Uh, so you should look at the program schedule to determine when that, where that will be. So after we get through today, uh, any, obviously any business not handled during a particular day gets carried on to the next day. Uh, it's tomorrow or Saturday will be the first main business meeting which is where the bulk of the constitutional amendments and things like that are considered. Uh, it's also the Market Protection Committee election for the three uh, elected uh, positions that are elected annually to serve three-year terms uh, overlapping. Uh, Sunday is the site selection meeting, which site selection business is the, the uh, special uh, item of business, including the announcements of the winner for 2021, its expense, and uh, various presentations and question times for other uh, bids. So uh, I need to go much more. If necessary, uh, there will be a meeting on Monday. It's primarily used as a threat to keep people from the time down. So, and a brief note about the scheduling um, for Sunday site selection business meeting. After we have finished the site selection portion of it, we will be taking um, about a half hour break to do the uh, Worldcon chair photo, and then we'll be resuming to take up any remaining business. So that is what the schedule for Sunday will look like. Uh, so, that's... I can't change anything. Um, I just found over what we're viewing today, so uh, we should proceed to do it. Uh, there's one other thing I hear, which is a, some additional information on postponing indefinitely and object consideration. Uh, it's not uncommon for people to be not completely pleased with proposed new amendments to the Constitution, uh, in which case they may want to uh, dispose of them rapidly. 
uh, proposed, proposed one indefinitely uh, can get rid of it with a two-thirds vote under our rules, but it does provide some debate time uh, for those proposing and opposed to the uh, motion. And object consideration, uh, we try to discourage that because it eliminates all debate, uh, but then it requires a three-quarters vote. So those are available at the preliminary business meeting. Object consideration can only be brought for brand new business that has not previously been considered so or cannot be done for constitutional amendments up for ratification. Uh, so the next item are resolutions. Uh, really quick before we get into the fun stuff. Um, if there are any first time business maybe attendees in the room, can you raise your hand? Awesome. Welcome. Welcome. And if you have attended, let's say, 10 or more business meetings, can you raise your hand? <laughs> so uh, everyone who just raised your hand, uh, I hope you were paying attention to who the new folks are. Uh, and uh, new folks, I hope you're paying attention to who just raised your hand because they are the experts and they will help you out. <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> we are all very nice and never snarky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are going to get started uh, by disposing of some reports. Um, so first, uh, in your agenda, item F, the financial reports um, from all of the conventions listed are before you. Are there any questions about uh, any of those reports? Okay, see none. Awesome. Uh, oh, that, sorry, I thought you were standing as your job. Uh, yes. My name is Terry Neal and I use she, her pronouns. And my question is for uh, Worldcon 76 in San Jose. Um, are you still dealing, holding off on some of your financial uh, payouts due to the lawsuit? Is that what's happening? Uh, yes, Kevin. I was going to call on you next anyways. This is why I'm here. I expected this question. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, we are. My name is Kevin Roach. He, him, his are my pronouns. I was the chair of Wolfcon 76. And um, <clears throat> yes, we are still in active litigation. But as we reduce the amount we have for fast long funds, I have our have our brought three checks with me this weekend. It has not eliminated our ability to pass long funds for future world times. Um, I cannot discuss the case in detail. Those of you who may have been following along know there were five complaints. The first four were dismissed with prejudice. Ruling. We are just left with the defamation claim from Mr. L. Rose and we are in discovery. All right. Is that better? Yeah. Yes. Right. Could you hear the first part or do I need to do it? Barely. All right. Um, yes, we are still in active litigation, which has reduced the funds we have available for uh, disbursement. I have, however, brought three pass along checks with me this weekend for Dublin for Con Zealand and for the um, winner of site selection for the 79th World Con. We um, will be doing our uh, membership reimbursements, we hope, uh, fourth quarter, unless something dramatic happens. Uh, we have the lists done, we have triple, triple checking them. We have to be very careful with our assets because of the ongoing litigation. In that litigation, the first four charges of five were dismissed with prejudice in the preliminary hearing. The, uh, plaintiff can, the complainant cannot amend and refile. All of the defendants except for the corporation were also dismissed. That was a stipulation. And we are currently in discovery. So at this point, we have sent his lawyer what he asked for, which included 3,300 screen caps of his social uh, media. <laughs> <laughs> uh, beyond that, I obviously can not discuss the case. Uh, my mic. Yeah, okay. yeah. 
and my mic should please remain on uh, for the entirety, regardless of who's speaking, since I'm the presiding officer. Um, is your question for, okay. Okay, uh, Terry will give you the mic. Mike's chairperson. Uh, my name is Ken Bloom, and I represent the World Town Heritage Organization. Do you anticipate having uh, sufficient surplus to be able to give us a donation for preserving the uh, World Town uh, memorabilia? I have to check our budget. I think we had a line item that was not effective for that, but I don't have the budget in front of me. Um, we anticipate prevailing in this lawsuit, which will then, in theory, let us recover some of our legal expenses and we will have further funds to disperse, but we can't guarantee that. So that is our hope, but it is a hope at this point, it is not a guarantee. And did you have the same question for- I have the same question for Mid-American and for uh, uh, Work on 75. Okay, is there a representative for Mid-American, not me, in the room? I don't know the answer. Uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, is there a representative from Worldcon 75 to answer? There's your answer. Uh, if uh, there are representatives available at tomorrow's meeting, um, I will uh, see if they're able to answer that question. Um, are there any more questions about any of the financial reports? None. Uh, do you have any more information you need to give us, Kevin? Well, I do need to find representatives of uh, Dublin 2019 and uh, Conzilla to present them with ten thousand dollar checks. Okay. I know that uh, there will be. I know there will be representatives uh, from Conzilla here uh, this meeting uh, tomorrow, I believe. Uh, so I am running the mass grade, so I. So, I will do it at the uh, site selection. Yeah, I am sure that if you let them know you are ready to give them money, they will figure out a way to get it from you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yes, but it's always more fun to do it in front of the people who help us run. Uh, they both they don't care about the money. <laughs> <laughs> I care. We, we all are very happy that you're giving them money. Yes. <laughs> all right, um, I do have duties, so. If I may, if there are any other questions for World Fund 76, if not, I'm going to have to run away again. All okay. right. I do not believe there are any more questions. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Uh, seeing that there were, it looked like there were no more questions about the financial reports, uh, that is Section F uh, dealt with and done. Awesome. Uh, we are going to move on to committee reports. Uh, so first, uh, Standing Committee of Wispus, the uh, Department of Protection Committee. Uh, I'm going to call on Kevin Stanley to give that report. Thanks, Chairperson. I'm Kevin Stanley, using he and pronouns. I am <coughs> chair of the Wispus Mark Protection Committee, and by virtue of that position, also the uh, president of Worldcom Intellectual Property, the nonprofit corporation we established to hold title for marks in places where it is hard to do so for an unincorporated association. Our report and that of the, and also the associated report of the Google Awards Marketing Committee begins on page 39. Uh, I'm certainly not going to read this all to you. Uh, you can read that for yourself if you didn't get a chance beforehand. The highlights for this year is that we have had a number of a couple of challenges to our service marks, <laughs> including a misuse of the Hugo Award logo. Um, this is, turns out to be the second time that having the European mark registration finally settled has really, really helped. And we want to thank Etsy for being so responsive to our request to deal with this violation of our service mark. Uh, we also have done a bunch of renewals on a bunch of our intellectual property, uh, some service mark renewals, domain renewals, things that happen only every few years, while well, a number of them all came to about the same time. So we've got, we've got them dealt with. And unless there are any questions, that would be the end of our oral report regarding the, from the NPC. Are there any questions of the Mark Protection today? Okay. So, don't mind waiting. We're, we, uh, I, Alexis, what do you mean? Yeah. Uh, 
I'm saying that uh, after doing some of these marks uh, might require some budget. Is there an actual budget for the report? An ongoing budget has been an ongoing issue of the committee. Uh, we discussed it in somewhat depth at our meeting yesterday. Uh, we have not been that great about producing our long-term budget, but we have worked out that our average expenditures in years where we don't have any specific threats are running in the neighborhood of $1,700 to $2,000 per year. It does come with peaks and valleys. Um, what was our financial? What was the financial? You can see that we have the yeah, you, you can see that we have the cash at hand at the moment. It uh, we're not terribly concerned right now for anything other than high level threats, ones that would cost in excess of five figures, at which point which uh, we considered unreasonable to try and build up sufficiently large nest eggs to handle those. Should any of those come along, you can expect us to have the baby ball out, to particularly to pass world cons that have money. But so that that's your your general answer. <coughs> Are there any? Okay. I'm just yielding yielding yeah. my time to the member. Harry and Lori, she her. Um, you, your report <coughs> mentions uh, the photographer asking for a one hundred dollar <coughs> license fee. Does the business meeting need to approve that expense? That was again that's something we discussed yesterday, it's, of course, so it's not in our report. The Mark Protection Committee does not believe it is something the business meeting has to take action on. The MTC has approved this item and intends to, uh, uh, although I've sort of given it away before Richard Mann has even heard about it, so we may be hearing about it indirectly. The answer is yes, we're going to take advantage of this very generous offer from uh, Richard. Does anyone else wish to ask the MTC a question? With that, I am going to Thank you very much. Okay, we are now going to handle uh, nominations uh, for uh, members for the Mark Protection Committee. I'm going to give the parliamentary in a sec. We are doing, yeah, we're doing nominations. So uh, Tim uh, Ingworth and Ben Yellow and Kevin Stanley are the three members that are coming off, correct, of the of the Mark Protection Committee. Um, and let's see, do we have anyone who has been nominated as well already? Or anyone else wish to nominate? Right. Thank you. Uh, so we'd like to ask for unanimous consent for those uh, three folks to. I'll be nominated again. Okay, hearing no objections. Cool. Are there any other nominations? Yes. I would be interested in presenting. I would be interested in presenting. No, it's not working. No, it, the, the sound guy didn't have it in. Okay, try it again. Did you turn it off at the bottom? I don't know. Sorry, can I? It's okay. Hello? Yes, it's working. Joe, you need to give your name. Hi, I'm Joe Van Ekren, pronouns she and her. Um, I would be interested in participating in the Mark Protection Committee, if not necessarily this year, at some point in the future. Okay, so I will take that to be a self-nomination. Uh, second. Thank you for the second that wasn't needed, but it's appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Joanne, I need you to fill out a form. Uh, so uh, when we go on break, uh, if you can come up here to get your consent form uh, for nomination, or Terry will bring it to you now, if that works as well. Uh, are there any other nominations? All right, hearing none, uh, nominations are closed, uh, and we will uh, handle the voting uh, at tomorrow's meeting. Okay, uh, moving on to more reports. Uh, let's see, I lost my section. What page was I am. There we go. Uh, standing committees of the business meeting. Uh, so I will call on, Don, are you still chair of picking and fly spiking? Because I, <laughs> I will call on you to give uh, a report. Hi, my name is Don Deesweig, I'm here for So, 
Um, I have a very brief report. Uh, the Naked Advice Committee tends to focus on different areas in different years. And recently we're focused on the Constitution in the past year. So we have a, a lot <laughs> of, as relatively speaking, constitutional amendments that are very simple ones to try to clean up some text in the Constitution. That will all come up uh, later in the meeting. So um, our, you can see in starting on page 19, you know, there's a description of a list of all the members, a, a, a description of our uh, tasks, and uh, I guess the, uh, you know, to the chair to indicate whether uh, there's a desire for a change in the membership thereof, or you know, the committee is uh, appointed by the chair. Okay, uh, the chair is going to ask for unanimous consent to uh, reappoint the entire committee to serve another year. Any objections? Yes, Terry? My name is Terry Neal. Um, can we get the names of the people who are on the committee? Right oh, now? sure. Uh, <laughs> that would be Don Eastlake Chair, Jared Dashoff, Linda Denneroff, uh, Tim Leeworth, Jesse Lip, Kevin Stanley, and Jovan Eckerin. Any objections to those people being uh, appointed for another year? Okay, it is done. Uh, thank you very much. Let's see, Mr. next. Person, yes. I had a question for the yes. uh, uh, You can come up to the yeah, front. <laughs> Mark Pine, he, him. I just wanted to know if the committee acted upon the proposed, the, resol the proposed constitutional amendment referred to it last year regarding uh, filing deadlines for the mark for committees required by the West's Constitution. I, yes, we answer that question is no. Uh, yeah, can you can you please repeat your question again slower to make sure the secretary is able to report it? Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, in terms of the the mic, instead of pulling it out of the um, holder upwards, uh, if you slide it out this way, uh, it'll be a lot easier. Okay, is this good? Uh, so at last year's business meeting, there was a constitutional amendment very late that was referred to the uh, Nipicking Fly Spectrum Committee for further consider for potential refinement consideration. I was just curious if that had been acted upon. Uh, it was. This should be in the constitution from last year's agenda. Uh, yes, Jovan. Um, the, the sound person is turning on mics as they are being used to okay. prevent there being sound difficulties. Mixed chairperson, um, I believe Martin's referring to a proposal that was actually passed last year, requiring people to uh, submit reports by 30 days prior to the uh, business meeting. Uh, okay. uh, so that that was in this. So that was done by standing rule, and there was a proposal submitted by by Mr. Yellow to change this to modify the constitution so that committees established by the constitution were deadlined from the constitution and not the standing rules. And I was oh, oh, I was just curious that I've been acting since it was referred. Oops. <laughs> So, uh, Don, can you confirm that the answer to the question is no, we did not uh, discuss it? Yes, I can confirm that we did not discuss that. <laughs> so, the, the reappointed uh, committee will uh, take upon it to uh, take care of that matter uh, this year and report back at next year's Worldcon with uh, the committee's apologies. If the chair is okay with me saying that. <laughs> the hierarchy has gotten very confusing. <laughs> okay, are there any other questions for the nitpicking and fly specking committee? Okay, uh, <coughs> on the uh, Worldcon Runner's Guide Editorial Committee, uh, does anyone wish to give a report on that? Yes, Mike. <laughs> My name is Mike Willemuth, and I'm the 
chair of the Worldcom Runner's Guide Committee. Uh, the report is in the back of the, you found in the back room. Uh, essentially, we're making incremental progress. Uh, the latest updates have been sent to Cheryl Morgan and copied to Kevin Stanley as a backup. So at least three of us have a copy of the uh, current updates. Um, I'd also like to thank Linda Dinneroff for her help with clearing up the Word documents when we took the PDF backups and converted them to Word. And there's lots of strange artifacts in there. And she's been of great help. So thank you, Linda. Um, You're quite welcome. Um, so it's a, it's a work in progress, and we'll keep on working on it until, you know, the bell freeze is over. <laughs> Are there any questions? Next chair, I just want to point out that we just got those copies just before we got here, so we'll update with some stuff over when we get home. <laughs> Thank you. Chair is now going to ask unanimous consent to uh, reappoint the uh, current World Commerce Guide Editorial Committee, uh, which you can find that list on page 19, uh, to serve for another year. Are there any objections? Okay, so it is done. I'm going to give the secretary a moment to catch up. <coughs> Although I will ask if there's anyone from the Folly Committee to please move to the podium. Mark here. Chairperson, my name is Kent Bloom. Uh, I'm one of the members of the committee. Uh, we continue to update the long list and to research into nitpicks and fly specs that occur as uh, people find new evidence of who did what to whom when. And, uh, I don't think that we've done anything major, but we certainly made some changes to the long list uh, this year. Uh, and uh, we would like to be uh, uh, endorsed for another year. Are there any objections? Uh, seeing none, you are so endorsed. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have a representative from the Hugo Award Study Committee to report? Um, Cliff Dunn, Chair. Uh, one moment to let the Secretary catch up, please. Tell him, Tell him you're ready. I will. Okay. Cool. Cliff Dunn, male pronouns, he, his, etc. Um, we obviously have our report, which is about the last uh, fifth of the agenda. Yes. Um, I think the report mostly speaks for itself. We would like to be continued for another year with the ability to uh, add slash remove members if necessary. Um, I do not want to take any questions, but I think we've made some steady but steady incremental progress and we do have a wiki uh, a wiki setup, I believe.